Hello everybody, my name is Benny and welcome to The Fool's Apprentice. So today I have a very special guest in my new series where we chit chat about the tarot. Today we have Lisa Rini all the way from England. Hi Lisa, how are you doing today? Hi. I'm good, thanks. I'm so good, excited good. to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you here as well. So can you tell us uh, the name of your channel? and uh, a little bit about yourself please sure um my channel is mythical witchery uh it's a little less than a year old and uh, well i'm as as you said i live in england but i'm actually canadian and i've been living here for about 10 years oh how, how did you end up making the transition from canada to uh england my husband is british he was ah okay okay did you meet in canada yes okay very cool now um i noted it see if, correct me if i'm wrong you you have almost 500 videos is that correct oh gosh yeah i think it's somewhere in that because i looked on there it said 400 the last time i looked it was 489 and you just said you've been doing this for less than a year yes but they're not all full-length videos <laughs> I know I but that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I try to I do got... every. Sorry. You... No, no, I said that's amazing. You said you were trying to do what? Um, every week I try to do um, what I call cards in a cuppa every day. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, a quick little collective reading, and it's usually about two minutes long. So yeah, I did see that. I did adds see up. those. Yeah. yeah, I saw that you do affirmations, and I think you use, if I'm not mistaken. A particular deck and then you go through the deck doing some informations affirmations okay so what gave you that idea to do that one you know i don't know i just one day i was looking i was using a deck and i thought i think it was wild woman rising and i thought mm -hmm. this would really be a, a great deck to do you know to record and do affirmations because it's just so uplifting and i thought other people might really enjoy it too very cool very cool now what got you into the idea of doing a tarot tube like what sparked it well my husband died um a little less than two years ago okay and i was i was devastated um of course i was his yeah i was his full-time carer caregiver and mm -hmm. uh, so my whole life was taking care of him mm -hmm. when he died i felt so lost i didn't know who i was i didn't know what i wanted to do with my life and of course being disabled as well it really limits me so i can't really get out there and interact with okay people. so i i made a list and i said what do i want to do what do i want to learn what do i want to, I want to focus on and one of the things that i had put on the back shelf for a long time was tarot and i thought you know i'm going to take that off the shelf and i'm going to dive in and and that's how it started for me you know, I, i'd okay. been i had sort of read tarot for well almost 40 years but not really not for other people <laughs> okay I played with it but it's only been the last two years that i really dove in okay well first thank you for sharing that that, that was very nice of you to you know let us in and my condolences you know uh i i do um i work with a lot of people uh, who have life challenges, especially with health and dealing with grief. So uh, something that I'm very familiar with and understand the challenges. And I really, really love that you were able to find a space where you could figure out like a future goal for yourself. And so no wonder you have over 400 videos because uh, it's really become a focal point for you. So I think that's great. Now. What got you into uh, the tarot? Like, do you remember, like, the moment? No, it was the day? it was so long ago. But yes, I do remember. Actually, I had I was about sixteen years old. And okay. I was over at a friend's house, and I was listening to a Led Zeppelin album, and it was Led Zeppelin Four, which is entitled, but a lot of people call it Zosa. It's the album that Stairway to Heaven was on, mm -hmm. and if you opened it up, there was this picture, like a I don't know what you call it, but like a big insert, almost like a poster. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what it was, but I loved it. 
and it turned out it was <laughs> it was the hermit. And oh, okay. I I drew it because I loved it, and it was after that that I found out that it was actually from the tarot, and it was the hermit card, and that was what kind of prompted my initial interest in the tarot. That is a really cool story. So, um, so you find out it's from the tarot. And they just, just have an idea that you wanted to learn more about the tarot and just went and bought a deck or was that something that happened later? Yeah, no, I, I got my, managed to get my hands on a deck and I was so baffled. <laughs> I just had no clue. So it wasn't something that I really dove into at that time. I just sort of, you know, looked at the cards and, and didn't really, I couldn't understand them. You know, so I had no idea what to do with them. And over the years I would, you know, take them out and have a look and, but you know, never, never really learned too much. But the last couple of years has been you know, like a massive education. Okay. Now, do you still have that deck? I don't. No, I oh, don't. Do you remember the, the, what deck it was? It was just, just a basic Rider Waite Smith. It was nothing. Okay. Special. All right. But I do remember the first deck that I got that was different. And it was called okay. the Mystic Tarot. And I think that one came out in 89. So, and I got it when it just came out. So that was a fair, fair while back. Okay. My, my son was a year old at that time. Oh, okay. How, and how old is your son now? He's in his thirties. <laughs> oh, so he went, yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Now, um, what, how did you end up starting to learn? Like, did you buy a book? Did you take a class? I, I'm the kind of person that teaches myself a lot. Okay. So I started by going on the internet and read a lot, went on websites. I got apps for my phone. I took a couple of courses through places like Center of Excellence and Udemy and, and just read lots of books and just studied as much as I could. Very cool. Yeah, um, I've taken a few classes. Um, I've got some books. I find myself all over the place. Even today, I still find myself all over the place. Uh, one of the things I've been trying to do is like, if I take a class, really focus on it and then do videos uh, because it keeps me on track since I'm starting you know, a series, then it forces me to continue to do it so I can finish. Uh, I find that doing those kinds of things really helps me. And I'm finding the more videos that, that I watch, I also kind of learn from uh, people talking about the card and what they like about the card and how you know a certain thing in the card kind of yeah. feels like the Rider Waite Smith and how it makes sense. Yes. I'd see some cards and I'd be like, I don't understand how they see um, <laughs> like the Five of Wands. I don't understand how they see the Five of Wands and that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> but I watch enough videos, then I get it. How long did it take you to kind of? feel comfortable with the cards and not necessarily have to rely on a book to remember what the card meant. You know, that, that it's really funny because I don't remember a specific time that I could say, yeah, this is when I, I started to really understand the cards and I didn't <clears throat> have to look at the book all the time. It just sort of happened mm. gradually and organically over time, you know, but to this day, if, if I'm stuck on something, I don't hesitate to pick up the book if I need to. You know, yeah. Because, I mean, I'm 55 years old. <laughs> and memory is not the greatest at times. So, yeah, there are some times that I, I pick up the book. And I think that's totally fine. I think we need to kind of normalize going to the guidebook when we need to. Yeah, I, I use the guidebook all the time. I don't think I've done a spread where I haven't looked at a guidebook still. Uh, there are some cards that I remember uh, really well, like the Five of Pentacles, but and the Fool, of course. Um, and I don't really need the guidebooks for those. But if I'm using, I still do because sometimes I notice that uh, authors will add a word or or have a meaning that's different than I'm accustomed to, and I like that because it just kind of broadens my idea. Um, do you have like a favorite deck that you use often? Uh, well, I have so many decks. <laughs> I'm definitely um, one of those people that should probably stop buying decks. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Fa 
favorite decks. I I love the Terra of Oneness. It's just such a beautiful, gentle <clears throat> deck, and I love it. But it's not the one I go to the most often. Believe it or not, the one I go to more than anything else is it's called um, Vintage. I think it's Vintage Tarot or Tarot Vintage. Yes, I saw that. You did a video of five, I think it was five or ten decks that I think, was it the, the, the hashtag that I did? Where yes. you picked five decks? And, okay, yes. I was really surprised that that was on your list. Of all the decks, that that was the one that you picked. Yeah, well, it's just I mean I'm not I'm not a purist, you know I'm I'm mm -hmm. happy to to use decks that that look very different from the Rider Waite Smith as long as they you know still sort of follow the system. But there's just something about that deck. It's so easy to shuffle, and for me that's a huge huge issue because I have quite severe arthritis, and so okay. shuffling can be so difficult. And that deck is just so easy to shuffle. And it took, I, you know, there's something about how it smells and how it feels. I love it. The, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, tactile, the way it's, how your senses work with them. So that does make a difference. Yeah. Um, I have the vintage, vintage Tarot. It's not on my top five list. <laughs> 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 but um, I actually have, oh man, I should have, I don't remember the name. I'm going to actually... Uh, send you a message on messenger on the oracle deck that i think goes really well with it it has the same tones very similar colors i think you'll love it uh i'll actually put it in the description below as well so that people are like what deck is he talking about um now is there a deck that you really really wanted and found it very difficult to find and then one day there it was for you oh no no <laughs> no no, there are decks that I really, really want, and I still, to this day, have not been able to get them, and it just makes me sad. But uh, one day, one day. What kind of what what decks are, would those be? Just give us a couple. Um, the Heart of Fairy by Wendy oh. and Brian Froud. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want that one so much. Um, the Northern Animal Tarot. I would like to get one of these days, and and I know it's fairly easy to get still. Um, my issue is justifying spending the money when I've already spent so much money on other decks. Um, Terrible of the Crone is is one that I would love to get, but it you know it's I don't think it's it, it is out of print. I think I think it's out of print. The one that I would like is yeah. if I'm not mistaken, there's some that has red in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that one would really be cool to have, but it's not really my aesthetic. Yeah. Um, Okay. Now, is it expensive for you to get decks from like the United States to be shipped over to to where you live? Yeah, it can be. But we're really lucky in the UK to have some fantastic creators who are here. Oh yeah, and others yeah. in Europe as well. So it's it's a lot cheaper to to get those decks. But definitely there are some. Of course, the the big mass market companies those are generally pretty easy through Amazon or you know, another company online. Now I have, I think, Oracle and Tarot decks. Total somewhere around 70-ish. Uh, how many do you have? Yeah, close to 300, I think. Uh, okay. Well, I know, I, know, oh. I think, I think um, Don Michelle has, she's approaching 600 and Lisa has like 400. So it's not uncommon for people to have that many decks. I think about that. I've slowed down quite a bit on my deck buying because when I first started, like probably all newcomers, like we find all these decks and we want them all. Yes. But little by little, I've slowed down quite a bit. Uh, I actually just purchased um, a tarot, tarot of Echoes. It just came out today for purchase. Oh, I was looking at that. I was so tempted. But yeah, I was there going, do I get, first, one of the things that I do, I saw it on Facebook, and then I followed the link, and then I was like, mm, is this really the right link? I'm so afraid to be scammed yeah. that, like, I, before I even go, I do research to figure out if this is, yeah. like, the real website. I get so nervous about that. Uh, do you do the same thing, or do you just pretty much trust the site? No, I'm I'm pretty careful, too. I have been scammed a couple of times. 
In oh. fact, one of my first um, decks that I bought within the last two years was the Lightseer's Tarot. I was so mm. excited about it. Really excited. And I bought it on Etsy thinking, oh, you know, it's probably... I didn't realize that there was such a thing as a counterfeit deck. Mm. And, um, and when I got it, I was so shocked because it, it came in a little tin, which you might think would be, you know, like that a counterfeiter wouldn't use tins, but they do. And, oh. and it was so tiny and the cards were so thin and the, the colors just weren't very bright. And yet it had gold metallic edging. And I thought something is wrong. Hmm. <laughs> I started to do some research and that's when I found <clears> out it was counterfeit. I was so upset. So I found were, you able to get, were you able to get your money back from Etsy? <laughs> yes. Yes, actually. I, I contacted the seller and, and said to them that they had sold me a counterfeit deck. And of course, they denied it. And I said, well, it's definitely counterfeit and I can prove it. And they said, well, we'll give you your money back. And so they did. Well, and they quit good. selling tarot decks. Okay. Well, good. I've been very fortunate that I have not been scammed. And I I am very proactive because I'm so afraid of, of, of it. Um, I have lost actually a couple of decks that I found out were actually, you know, because they'll post on Facebook in those pages where you can buy out of print decks like Tarot Marketplace. Because um, something was off for me and I really listened to my intuition. And later it turned out, uh, actually the, de uh, the deck, one of them was the Spoiler Tarot. Oh. I was very apprehensive because it was at a very reasonable price, still higher than normal, but very reasonable. Um, uh, the one thing, the, one of the things is they, if they ever ask me to do friends and family on PayPal, it's a no for me at that point. And I don't care what you say, I'm not going to purchase it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what this person did. But later I found out through somebody that I trust that it was actually the real one. Um, one of the big things that I do is I pick, I ask the seller to randomly pick two cards that, of my choosing. So I'll pick two cards and then I have them um, do a third card with a back, those two cards, and then a piece of paper with today's date. That's very and smart. They, yeah. And if they uh, do it and I see it, then I feel like I can trust it and I'll purchase it. If they don't do it, then, you know, I'm not buying it. Because at that point, I don't trust you. So that's one of the things that I do. Sorry. And Alexa heard me talking and she, oh, there she goes again. <laughs> I have two dogs. They come up to me every once in a while. And then, so I don't know why today of all days, we have people working. Uh, I live in a condominium. So right across, right. They're, they're doing some work. And so you might hear some stuff in the background. Okay. So um, do you have a favorite card? from the tarot decks, uh, yes, which one? Yeah, um, honestly, the hermit. And, the hermit. I don't know if that goes back to, you know, my first introduction to the tarot through mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin, or, or if it's just because I really relate to that card in, in a lot of ways. I'm, a, I'm an introvert, a very shy person, and, mm. and, and very comfortable just by myself, you know? Okay. So. And, and I kind of see the hermit as almost like I feel a kinship, <laughs> I guess, with the hermit. Very cool. Yeah, a lot of people would assume that it, it's the fool that's my favorite, but it's not. <laughs> I, uh, you know, the, my name came from this idea that I'm learning from the fool. So I am the fool's apprentice. Because when I started the channel, um, I wanted people to be able to see what that journey looks like for somebody that's brand new. So yeah. Uh, you know, people can look back and go, oh, I remember when I was in that place. Or for me, people to feel like, okay, I'm not the only one that feels this way. You know, so I just wanted to do a tarot tube. I just wanted to feel like a part of the community because yeah. here in San Antonio, I live in San Antonio, Texas. I don't have anybody that I can go and have coffee with and talk about the tarot. Uh, at least I haven't met anybody yet. So I thought this would be a great way of finding, you know, like-minded people. Uh, so uh, that's why I did it. And it's great because now I've, I've met you and a 
few other people. So that's really exciting for me. Oh, it's amazing. And I think the tarot community itself is just wonderful. The people I've, I've interacted with so far have been very supportive, very supportive. Do you have people uh, outside of you know YouTube that you associate with that, that do tarot? Yeah, I've, I've got a couple of friends that um, they're, they're good friends and they both do tarot. And uh, another friend I've had for years and years, and um, he, he's done tarot for many years as well. Just, just sort of dabbled in it, but yeah. They're, are they kind of like mentors for you? No, I wouldn't really say that. No, no. In a lot of ways, um, they feel for some reason like I have more experience than they do. <laughs> I don't feel like that's true, but maybe it's just because I'm older than they are. I'm sorry. Uh, and yes. you mentioned that you mentioned that you, do, you you've done readings for other people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And do what was that like when you first started doing that? I haven't done that. I've done it a couple of times, <laughs> uh, but not, but I'm always like, just so you know, I'm brand new. Just you know, be patient with me because I got to fix. Yeah. Um, oh, I was well, terrified. I was so yeah. terrified. I was so sure that they were going to say you're a fraud. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, <laughs> yeah. this is so inaccurate, but surprisingly I had people saying that was, that was so accurate. That was, that really resonated with me. I've had lots of other people say, ah, it didn't resonate with me. And that's totally fine because I'm not going to get it right every time. And, Very and I don't cool. expect to, but I just, I actually got involved in a, um, a website online that offers free readings. To oh, on a weekly basis and so I got involved in that and so every week I would I would be doing free readings for people and it was a really great way, great way for me to learn how to do that and then of course on tarot tube because I do my cards on a cup every day mm -hmm. I found I've learned so much doing that as well very very cool now um do, are, do, are you reading for people that you know or just like, do you go anywhere and sit there and put your cards out and wait for people to come by? Or how, how does it work for well, you? Well, no, not, not in person, you know, but oh, okay. yes, I, I read for other people um, all the time, people I know and people that I don't know. But I'm, as I said earlier, I'm disabled and I'm also housebound. So I can't actually go oh. out there and, and, you know. but that's okay because I'm very shy anyway. So it doesn't bother me. But just doing stuff online for people. I, I enjoy that and do that quite a lot. My bean has come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, you, you have one cat? Or yes. Have, uh, yeah, I one. had another one and she died a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I have uh, I have two dogs. Precious is 14 now. And I'm so hyper aware of, like I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. Oh. I'm very hyper aware that um, her time is coming and I'm really, really scared. <laughs> I'm oh, really scared. Um, like I, I've been take, I take her to the vet a lot because there's something going on. Okay. I have to take her to the vet because I want to make sure she's okay. Um, and my brain, uh, I'm a cancer survivor. And so I find a lump or I see something that's different. My first thought is like, oh my gosh, she has cancer. So I take her to the vet. <laughs> oh, I actually took her to the vet um, yesterday because she had a lump on her snout and then she had a little lesion right here. And that made me, that scared me. And so I took her to the vet. The vet said, no, it just, it's a tear. It's fine. I made him look all, all over her body. He's like, no, these are just nodes as they get older. It's not, I'm not concerned. We did her blood work. Yeah. Of all her blood work, she only had one that was slightly elevated. You know, the doctor's like, she's as healthy as she, as she can be. She's oh. really healthy. So that kind of settled me. But it's just, you know, she's old. And so right now I spoil her all the time. She gets petted as much as she wants. She gets all the treats that she wants. Um, but I know that day is not too far along. And so my brother was like, you know, enjoy her for today. Enjoy her. Stay in that space. Enjoy her. So I tried to avoid letting my brain run. 
so but i i i get i get it i get it so yeah. are, are you know are, there are there are children you know i don't have any kids but these are my kids now, do you do uh, do you do professional reading where you earn an income? I do, um, not not a whole lot because I mm -hmm. because of my illness, I can get really tired really easily. Mm -hmm. So I hate to commit to doing something um, that that could take energy that I need. So okay, but but I I do three or four paid readings a month usually. Okay. Just a, now, if anybody's watching that would like a reading from you, where would they go? Uh, well, they can contact me through my channel. Mm -hmm. Or I also have a, a group <clears throat> on Facebook as well that I offer free readings on there. And, and is the Facebook by the same name as your tarot ch uh, channel? It is, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. And that'll be easy to find. And then I'll put a link uh, to your uh channel uh, below as well so people can find you lovely thank you now do you use oracle cards in connection to you you do you do okay yeah i love oracle cards i i think me too <laughs> i love it uh, um surprisingly because when i did my collection walkthrough um i thought i had more oracle cards and tarot cards uh, i love them absolutely love oracle cards um i find oracle cards really work in developing the intuition which really helps and translates over to tarot um what are some of your favorite oracle cards oh gosh my i think my top favorites would be um the nocturna oracle mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. made by uh, the people that made anima mundi which is one of my top favorite tarot decks um, Thistle Down Oracle is another huge favorite for me. Um, oh gosh. Person in Shadow. Are you familiar with that one? I am. I didn't get it. And Love I'm it. like, oh. Well, so, she but I think it's reprinting. Right, right. The fall. And um, so I'm. When? In the autumn. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm hoping that. Uh, I can get that one because it actually, after watching several walkthroughs, I'm like, oh, I should have gotten it. <laughs> um, so how do you use your Oracle cards with tarot cards? What I'll often do is, well, it, it really, I work with them so intuitively. So it, mm -hmm. it'll be different, you know, this time from the next time or the time before. Okay. But sometimes I'll take one card and that'll be sort of the energy of the reading and then do mm -hmm. tarot cards around it. Or I'll just do the tarot cards and then pull extra oracle cards just to, you know, see how if there's anything else that, that the person needs to know or that I need to know. So I often do pair them up. Oh, so I've never done that before where I have the tarot cards out and then pulled like a clarifying uh, tarot deck. I, I tend to do um, a theme based on the Oracle card, like what's the overarching theme of the day or what's the uh, underlying message. So I'll put it on top or on bottom and then the tarot cards will go around it. So that's how I tend to use it. Uh, for some reason, I haven't used them as a reading by themselves. Have, do you use Oracle cards by themselves for a reading? Yeah, yeah I do. Uh, I find them quite effective, actually, as a reading. Yeah. Pulling two or three cards, you can get a lot from that. Yeah. A lot depends on the deck it. too. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy it, and considering how many decks I have, <laughs> I I do try and use most of my decks. So. I was doing that. I was trying to change my cards every three days, but I found that for me, that probably was counterproductive because I did want to use all my decks. I bought them for that reason, but I'm still in the learning process and I haven't really sat down and just like studied, you know, I, I still don't feel like I've sat down and studied and I found that really what I should have done is stuck with one deck and just really got to know that deck. And so I ended up doing the Terra Volatile. I'm still working on that one. Uh, but I broke. Talk ahead. about diving into the defense. <laughs> yes. I, I talked to my Terra mentor. 
And um, he said that it, 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 because it does have a really strong base in the Rider Waite Smith, it was fine. But yes, there is so much in each card that um, maybe I, I could have picked something different. Um, in fact, I could have picked a lot of other ones, but that one really, really spoke to me. So um, I, that's the one that I ended up choosing. Uh, and so how do you decide? Do you have like certain decks that you end up using for certain types of readings or it's just whatever deck calls you? It really depends on the reading and, mm, and on mm -hmm. the person. And, and this is where I use my intuition you know, as much as anything. But there are some decks, like I've got, I have my decks all arranged and like I've got holiday themed decks. So right now I'm using um, decks that are, you know, based on Yule or winter or Christmas and that kind of thing. And I'll be doing that through the month. But if I'm doing a reading for a person, another person, it, it really depends on what they're looking for in the reading. And then I will take that information and use that to help me choose a deck that would be appropriate for them. And it kind of works out so far. So Okay. Now, do you happen to have a deck that um, you never thought that you would get and, and actually do have? I, that, I was, that was my follow-up question from earlier out of my yeah. decks. But do you actually have a deck that you were like, I never thought I'd get it and you got it? Yes. The Bohemian Gothic. Oh, is it the new one or an older version? The, the new one. Me too. That was on my uh, unicorn list, and yes. I couldn't believe that they ended up uh, reprinting it. And I'm like, I, I love that deck. I really love that deck. Yeah. Have you used it? No, I haven't, and I'm not sure if I'm going to. It's just, it's like, I, I don't buy decks to collect. But this to me feels like a deck that should just sit on the shelf <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and not, and I'm not sure why I feel like that. In fact, you can probably see it behind me here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been redoing my, my space as you can see. I mean, uh, the other way I've been redoing my space. So all my valuable decks to include like all the Baba Studio decks, they're in a box hidden away because I don't want any damage. I'm just, so I have like these right here to fill in the space. But um, I ended up getting the jumbo size, the limited edition and a regular size. Yeah. The jumbo one's just staying there for me. It's just like a collector's item. I probably will never use it. Maybe one day if there's a deck out there, that I really want that's extremely difficult to get. And then since this is the last printing, maybe I'll be able to use it as a bartering, a, a bartering tool. Yeah. But uh, do you have any other Baba Studio decks? No, I don't. But I've got two of them are on my list. Um, yeah, which on, on my wish list, the, the fairy tale, which I'll probably oh. never get, but that's on my yeah. list. And the Bohemian Cats. I'm so excited. Oh, that was, that, that was, I know. Out. Some of your videos, you have a you have a lot of animal decks, dogs, cats. I do. Uh, I do. Yeah, I was watching your videos, and I'm like, God, she has a lot of them. What I find very what I very find surprising is people love cat decks, like love them. Yeah, well, they do. My daughter bought me a new bookshelf. <laughs> oh, did she? Course, for Christmas because I desperately needed one. And so she came and helped me set it up, and I, I rearranged all my decks, and I rearranged at them as much as I could thematically. Mm -hmm. So I have one shelf that is just animal decks, and another shelf that so general animal decks, and then another shelf that is specific animal decks. So it's like ravens and crows and owls and dogs and cats and. <laughs> wow! So many decks I have. That that is amazing. I um, mine is very eclectic. Uh, I don't. I also have a lot of animal decks, but I don't have shelves of them. <laughs> um, I I have uh, the Northern Animal uh, Tarot deck. I have an Orca deck. Feels this, oh, the feels Oracle. It's actually a really beautiful uh, Oracle card deck that uh, I have. But um, 
Oh, I was going to ask you something else about those. What kind of readings do you do with animal decks? All kinds of readings. All um, kinds. It's so. It's, yeah, yeah. I I treat them the same way I would treat any other any other deck. So, if if I'm doing, like for example, I've got a friend who she loves dogs, loves dogs. So with her, she she loves my my dog decks. So those are the ones I go to for her. Okay, well that makes sense. Like, yeah. Now, did you did you ever find it difficult to remember? For some reason, there was a card that really you struggled to remember, and you really don't know why. But did you ever have a card like that? Oh, many. Oh, really? <laughs> many. <laughs> um, I I can't think of any off the top of my head, but it was just it was just kind of the same thing again, where over time and sort of osmosis, I, I guess, I, I just got more, more comfortable, but I couldn't pinpoint a specific card today that I could say I really struggle with understanding the meaning of that card. Okay. Um, How were the cloak cards I, for you? Not bad, actually. I oh, mean, really? the Queens, yeah, the Queens and Kings, I can, I find them to be in, in some ways they can be so similar, but then, but then I, I keep thinking, well, okay, but the, the Queen is obviously more nurturing not necessarily mm. thinking of the queen of swords here <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the, the court cards i didn't struggle so much with you know okay well i'm glad pages, to hear that yeah all the uh, yeah, I, are they're you know kind of they're curious they're eager they're you know and and, and they all sort of have that quality to them mm -hmm. so, yeah, just now, did you associate them? Because I hear a lot of people associate them with people like TV shows or people that they know. Did you do anything like that? I didn't. No. Okay. No, I, didn't. Um, I think that's a fantastic idea, though. And certainly yeah. I have read some books where people, I, I had one, um, I can't think of the name of it off the top, but it was. I wish I could remember the name because it was a great book and, and it covered every single card. And so every day I, and I did this for, well, gosh, it was a little over two months. And every day I would pull one card and then go to that book. And it was like a workbook and, and work through it. And she did that with court cards, associating them with, with people and characters from Disney and so on. No. And oh, that's actually very cool. Yeah, and it, it really did. There were a few of them, though, that I thought, I have no clue who you're talking about, so I had to actually go on <laughs> Disney to watch the film so I could understand what they were talking about. I haven't approached the court cards yet. The only time I go to them um, is when I pull them in, uh, uh, in a spread, then I'll have to go to the book for them, but I haven't taken the time to sit with them. And to be frank, I'm intimidated by the court cards. Yeah. Um, I think partly is because I do hear so many people talk about how they struggle with them. So I think that's influenced me some uh, in being hesitant in approaching them. But I figured if I can get the major arcana and then the ace through 10 down, then that'll free up enough brain space for me to focus on the court cards because everything else would just fall into place. So I at think least that's what I think. Find, yeah, oh, I think so. Yeah. And I think what you'll probably find is that you're going to end up learning more about them than you think you're learning. And okay. then one day you're going to go, oh, yeah, no, I know what the, the Page of Pentacles means. And even though you haven't actually studied that card, it's just because you're you're learning what the pages mean and you're so familiar with what the pentacles mean that you're able to just put that together I okay that's, that's true I, I hope so um one of the things that i've been noticing recently that i'm starting to pay attention to i don't know who was i watching i think it was least um truth and story uh she was talking about the elements and the numbers. And also Don the Show has a really good grasp on the elements and numbers. Uh, do you use those in your readings? Like you see like three sevens or a lot of pentacles. Do you use that information in your readings? Yeah, if if there's a lot, then I pay attention because I think that you know that 
generally then means something. You know, if there's, if there's, I'm doing a reading of, let's say, five cards and three of them are pentacles, then that gets my attention. Or three of them are sevens, that definitely gets my attention. But other yeah. than that, you know, unless there's, there's something significant, then not so much. But. Yeah, I, um, I, I, for some reason, my brain has started to like click onto that where um, I want to start using those because, and it just recently happened like a couple of days ago where that's coming up in my mind a lot is like, okay, what, what are the numbers? Uh, is it all odd numbers? Is it, you know, even positive and uh, uh, odd numbers? I mean, it's just even in odd numbers. Uh, what suits are there like? Like I recently posted on Facebook, I did a spread on serenity and I had the oh, power. Did you see it? Yes. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, what a spread. Uh, for people you have the had, ten of swords. In the yes. The, it was, and the seven of wands. Uh, and it was just like, okay, there's a very strong message here. I couldn't help but laugh. But what, I, but what was really cool for me is that I knew what the cards meant and it caught me by surprise because I was talking about serenity. So that lets me know that I'm learning because it took me aback when I first saw it. Um, so uh, any big challenges, like all of us face the challenges of being overwhelmed with learning the tarot because there's so many cards. Uh, any major challenge that you, you ended up dealing with outside of that in learning the tarot? I think it was just trusting myself, believing that I, that I could do it, that I wasn't a fraud. You know, I think that whole, what do they call that? Um, imposter syndrome? Yes, imposter syndrome. <laughs> just thinking, you know. Who do I think I am doing this? I don't have a clue what I'm doing, but then surprising myself and, and discovering that actually I kind of do know. So I love that I answer. All the time. I think that's a great answer. I love that. Yeah, I think many of us go through that that process. The fact that you recognize it is probably one of the biggest challenges. I I think is right on. I, I could say that the same thing for me. Even when I do my own readings. Uh, you know, I I have that experience. Uh, do you do any kind of journaling? I do, actually. Oh, okay. I am a huge, huge fan of Don Michelle. Just a massive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I have learned so much from her. And I watch her channel all the time. And I do her monthly medicine. And I'm very excited about this year coming up. Because it's... Yeah, it's very different. different. Uh, yeah. I was on Amazon looking... Uh, at dice, you know, because she's oh, going to be great. using yeah. dice, yeah. and so I was looking at Dungeon and Dragons. Uh, and you know, it's really surprising because uh, on your, uh, you also are a gamer, correct? Say again. You're a gamer, as well. Yes, I am. So it's really in my mind. I don't see people our age being gamers, but I find that actually they're like we had. Like back in the day, we had games as well. So for some reason, like Atari, if anybody, <laughs> I'm, I'm dating myself. So, you know, people still play that. So when she said she was doing, uh, she mentioned references, all these games, I was like really taken aback because I just didn't expect that from her. And that she's in, and the fact that she's incorporating that in the monthly medicine, I think is amazing. Oh, how I long have you been, how long have you been doing the um, monthly medicine? Uh, I, just for a year now, I uh, started in January of, of 2023, and I've been doing it. I haven't done every single month. There's been a couple mm -hmm. months that I didn't, but almost every month. I love it. Do, Definitely. Do you find it beneficial? So, okay. So you do find it beneficial. For sure. Yeah. This would be my first year where I'm actually going to try to do it. I didn't do it. I, I follow it. I've not done it, but this, this is going to be the year that, uh, I'm going to try. I have so much going on in my life that I find it very difficult to sit and do stuff. Uh, like I bought a deck a couple of months ago and it's still wrapped because I just haven't had time to get to it. Oh, oh you know, it happened to me too. Uh, so th that's, that's my challenge is finding space 
to dedicate to studying and learning the tarot. Um, I ended up just buying a whole bunch of stuff because I want to do journaling as well. So I'll be making a video on all the stuff that I bought. I even bought the those little instant cameras where you can take uh, pictures and put them on your journal. Yes. Yeah. I got one of those. Um, and I, I tend to go overboard. Like I looked at like, it felt like a hundred videos before I decided to buy the one. And I'm thinking, gosh, I hope I didn't make a mistake. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. So what kind of journaling do you do? Do you do like, the, do you take a picture, put it in and then do your, yeah, reading I, around it. Yes, well, I, I do a, a couple of different ways depending on. You know, I've got my. I don't do it every day, but like, um, say a one card pull. Mm -hmm. Journal on that and how that relates to me. Of course, Dawn's monthly medicine, and sometimes I do it in a physical book, and other times I do it digitally. Um, oh, October monthly medicine that she did, which was. Oh, it was really intense. <laughs> For me, it was very intense. It was ghost stories. And, mm. and I I wasn't expecting it to go the direction that it went for me. But okay. for me, it really, um, it was all about my grief. Oh. And my, my journey through, through grieving um, for my husband. And, and pointed out things that I still need to work on. And also pointed out how far I've come. I'm not sure what my cat just did there, but he's, I think he stepped on a key. I hope he didn't. <laughs> yeah, grief is, uh, grief is, you know, like I mentioned, I, I do grief work with people. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and grief is a long life process. A lot, a lot of people feel that, you know, I grieve and then you're done. And it's like, no, it's, it's a process that you will experience through the rest of your life. It will look different as you go through your life um how it feels will feel different as you go through your life but grief will be will always be an underlying you know a uh, stream when that person comes to mind yeah so exactly. so i think that i think it's amazing that you did grief work with the tarot i think i think that's actually quite amazing yeah it was um, so helpful good good what kind of supplies do you use with uh, your journaling many <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, right. i've got ink pads and stamps and stickers oh my gosh so many stickers <laughs> oh i've got different kinds of markers and glue and papers and oh gosh so many things i actually shared a thing on facebook a couple of days ago about it was it was sort of meant to be a joke about santa coming and and looking around and saying, yeah, no, you've got enough crap. I'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you feel that your journaling has like progressed and like, are you happy with the way it looks aesthetically? Are you like really enjoying how it looks? Yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm a really artistic person. So okay. I find the process appeals to that side of me. And mm -hmm. And it's also a really good way for me to to get my feelings down on paper. And, okay. and sometimes I'll discover things that I didn't even know, you know, and they'll come out through journaling. So I find it so helpful. Yeah, I um I am not artistic in any way, shape, or form. I wish I was one I God, I wish I had just one thing that I was good at. Can't draw, can't paint, um, can't sing. Uh, nothing like that would be in the arts area. I just don't have that in me. And I like imagine being a beautiful artist and then you can fill your own home with art. I can't do that. Oh, you know, <laughs> I don't think that's true, Benny. I don't think that's true because I see what you've done with your tarot space and and how you've transformed it. And to me, that's art. That's creativity. Oh, I think thank you. you have you have creativity that you don't even realize you have. Uh, yeah, my brain. Yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I do like my home and the way it looks. I'm in my living room. The space that I'm in is supposed to be like a dining area, but I always eat on the couch. I'm not going to use this space for a dining area. So I use it as my 
spiritual place, my writing space, my tarot space. This is uh, an area that really is about growing as a person for me, yeah. this, this space. Uh, it's a very special space for me, but it's right next to my living room. So right in front of me is my living room. Right past that is my kitchen. So, um, yeah, but thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm really trying. I'm trying to figure it out. It's beautiful. Um, Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking right around here of uh, getting a neon sign that says the fool's apprentice oh, uh, for above. So I thought that would be kind of cool. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I tried journaling j- before I, I don't know. I did a video on the elements in journaling. Yeah. Oh, that journal was so ugly. <laughs> it was oh. ugly. <laughs> So I'm going to retry again. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more methodical about it. I'm going to look at some videos and how people do their journals, like particular drawings or how they do numbers and try to figure out how to make it aesthetically pleasing. Because for me, if I don't like it, I'll never use it. I know me. I know me. But I also know that the process of doing is how I remember. Because that's one of the ways I learn is by doing. So it'd be worth it in that regard, no matter what. I highly now, recommend stickers. Get lots and lots of stickers. <laughs> of you know, things, whether they're flowers or butterflies or, you know, whatever, and just decorate up the page. I'm glad you brought that up because it triggered something I like to talk about is I don't feel there's enough male representation in tarot. Which also shows up in decks, shows up in journaling and tools that we use in journaling. Um, what do you think about that? I think you're right. Uh, it would be great to see more. I mean, I, I think that that we as a culture, you know, we're we're trying to balance the scales, you know, because it, our culture has been so male dominated for so long, and, yes. and so we're sort of balancing it the other way, but. Maybe we've gone a little bit too far in the other direction. And I, I think that finding a balance would be really great. Uh, there are some decks that I really, really like. But it so strongly has all this female energy that it, it doesn't really bother me. But I want to have a collection that's a lot more balanced. Uh, so I don't buy them. But I have some, I have a lot of decks that are very um, feminine, full of that energy that I absolutely love. I have some masculine decks, but there just isn't enough. But I also understand that what you were just saying is that since it was such a dominating, culturally, this world is dominated by men. I mean, it is what it is. And so there is this, you know, uh, this shift in the tarot. Um, But I also know that most women are the ones that develop these decks. You know, uh, most women use tarot because they're comfortable with using them. So therefore, it is going to be a very female-dominated um, space. Uh, but I just want a little bit, little bit more. And so maybe several years from now, I'll create one that is a lot more balanced, that has a lot of really oh. strong masculine energy. That would be brilliant. In fact, I was just sitting here thinking, maybe you should put your energy towards creating a deck like that, even if you didn't do the art yourself. You know, much like Lisa Pepez is having someone mm-hmm. do the art for her vision. You know, maybe you could find an artist that could work with your vision and create a deck. That has been, it's been amazing watching her go through that whole process. Uh, and it also lets me know that, oh, okay, you don't necessarily have to be the artist. You have to you can be the author, you can come up with the ideas, you can have the concepts, you can have the vision. And I, so I, you know, so that's a possibility. I'd also, also, I have not been generally very happy with the LGBT decks that I've seen. I'm like, mm, uh, I haven't really found one that kind of speaks. Uh, the Rainbow Tarot is an LGBT deck because of the artist and she says it's inspired by the queer community i love that deck but i don't see like a deck for like gay men you know uh which i so thought what about theodore pavlov does that i know that, that actually yes 
Yeah. Yes, that is that that is yes. You got yes, you are absolutely right. I love that deck. In fact, I have that deck. It's one of my favorite decks. So um I love how diverse his yes. deck is. It encompasses yes. a broad range of the Elvic BGT community. So yes, I completely forgot about that until you brought it up. Um that is probably the best LGBT deck out there right now. I I can't think of another one at all. Uh, that work is amazing, very much. And I love how he love plays it. with gender. Yes, yeah, which is fantastic. My my best friend is trans, and okay. so to to find a deck that's created by someone who's trans that that you can see uh, that I can see my friend in that deck. It's mm -hmm. really, really special. Um, in fact, I, I bought him um, a deck for Christmas. And I was going through all my decks because I was trying to figure out what he went like. And, and so he, he had sort of a, a private flip through <laughs> of about a dozen decks. And, and I, I brought out the Fyodor Pavlov and, and he was like, yeah, I liked it, but it didn't, it wasn't quite, you know, ended up settling on the Tarot of Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That just suited them. So we ended up not doing one that was, you know, LGBT, but but something that was totally different, but suits him. Yeah, well, one of the things is that um, we are not LGBT. That's not how we really, had, let me speak for myself. I can't speak for anybody else. I, I am not first a gay man. First, I am just some guy. I'm a guy. You yep. know, that's it. I happen to be a gay man. It's just yep. a part of me, not, not, it is not the most dominant part of me, even though it has the, one of the greatest influences of who I am as a person. Uh, so, you know, just because I am LGBT doesn't mean I only want an LGBT deck. In fact, I think the Pavlov is probably the only one that would probably be in, in my top 10. Everything else would be, you know, everything else to yep. include animal decks. Um, who are some of your favorite uh, tarot uh, channels? Well, Don Michelle. Yes, of course. <laughs> probably my, my very favorite. Um, Lisa Pepez, of course. Mm -hmm. Love Lisa. And, and you are in my top three. I, oh, my gosh. Yeah, the first couple of times I, I saw you, Benny, I was like, there's just, there was just something about you that just drew me in. And I, I just had to keep coming back. And, you know, after I had subscribed, of course, I saw your videos whenever they would pop up and kept watching them and watching them. And, and that's why I initially reached out to you, because I thought, you know, this is a person that I, if, if I met you in real life, that I would want to get to know, because you're just, Aww. there's something about you that I find just so sweet. And well, thank so you. Real. I really appreciate and that. I, thank you. I love uh, you. Know, oh, my God. I, you saw the, uh, thank you. I try to be very authentic. I, I am who I am. I am very measured on what I share on my yeah. channel. Like I haven't shared what I do for a living. It took me a long time, um, to share that I am a gay man. Um, me, I grew up in a time where you just didn't disclose that I live in Texas. <laughs> very conservative city i live in san antonio a very religious uh yes. conservative city um my own personal experiences gr growing up you know it wasn't necessarily safe at that time no. in fact i remember the first time i saw a gay couple holding hands in public it was at our local university a community college and i was entering a Bentley, and i turned around and i saw these two young men holding hands walking across campus and I just started to cry because I looked around and nobody was really paying attention to them. It felt so normal and I was so overwhelmed that they could love each other and not be afraid uh, of, about their safety. But that hasn't kind of like disappeared from me because of my own personal experience. So on my channel, um, I didn't, I didn't know if I wanted to do that or not. And watching Lisa, she's so very open with Peggy yeah. that it really 
freed me and inspired me just to be myself. So when you brought up the word authentic, I had asked Lisa about that, you know, about being authentic uh, with her relationship and stuff. And yeah, it, sometimes you just need somebody to model it, to make it safe and be able to walk through. So that, that really helped a lot. So um, I try to be just me. And generally, I, I'm me, you know. And besides, I walk into a room, it's not like you're not going to know. <laughs> And that's there's and there's nothing wrong with that. And if there is yeah. something wrong with that, as far as the people, as far as some people are concerned, that's totally their problem. I have found very, what's been really interesting for me in my life journey is that um, even people who have issues with my community don't seem to have an issue with me. They feel very safe and comfortable around me. So I've not very rarely have I had a negative experience based on my sexual orientation but i think it's because um people feel comfortable and safe around me generally so i think that's why now any big lessons that you learned from a tarot tube uh video that you saw that made me go oh my gosh oh so many <laughs> so many so many um yeah i i can't remember a specific one that, that sort of okay. out at me but but yeah, I'm I'm learning stuff all the time, and Same and not here. just about tarot, but but about trusting myself. That that's a huge mm -hmm. oops, my thing fell out. Your bed. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I think that's maybe the biggest thing that I've learned by watching, by watching tarot too, by seeing other people who are maybe like you know they're like me, and. Seeing people who are like you really helps a lot, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what's been really cool for me? And this is one of the reasons I did decide to have people and just chat about the tarot is I find people so very interesting and they will say these little things that let me in a little bit to their private lives. God, I feel like I'm so close to the camera. Um, that I just want to get to know them a little bit better. Uh, I, I like, I just want to feel like, you know, it feels like I'm getting to know them, but I don't know them. Uh, exactly. and everybody, yeah. And then watching how everybody, like there are people who have never shown themselves on the video. So I have this image of what they look like. And then <laughs> I see, <people>. yeah. <laughs> and then I, I, there are people who just freely show themselves. And then there are people who do two minute videos, you know, 20 minute videos people who do two hour videos and I just find it. And then there are people who like in their background, you can see their whole home and you know, uh, like Lisa has her spouse right there. And it's just really, really interesting to see how diverse we are as a community, which I think is amazing. Yes, definitely. What you said about feeling like you get to know people. Mm -hmm. it, it's funny how that happens because mm -hmm. in, in, so, in so many ways, I feel like I know Lisa. Or I know Dawn, and mm -hmm. I think if we met in real life, that I would I would love to have a friendship with them, and yet they don't have a clue who I am. You know, I mean, it's not that they it, haven't ever spoken to me; they have, but yeah, I'm not on their radar. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, all. right? So that that's what I intend to do: is just try to meet as many of us yeah. as possible, because um, I just. I find it fascinating how we all get in, uh, into this space because, you know, there's so many of us. Uh, I think our community is huge, but only a few of us are really on tarot tube. Yeah. What kind of videos do you, do you like to watch? Um, well, journaling. I love watching journaling videos. Mm -hmm. um, videos where, obviously, I love flip throughs. I mm -hmm. think flip throughs are a fantastic way to... I have made so many mistakes in buying decks that I didn't see a flip through, and and I got the deck and I was like, oh, I don't like that. And had I seen a flip through, I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> so that's yeah, flip fun. throughs, flip throughs end up on my shelf a lot, <laughs> so I've had to be very careful with flip throughs. But I love flip throughs because um, people talk about the card, and then I learn something about that card that I didn't know before. So that really helps. 
I do like watching deck collections. Uh, I love, I love watching hashtags. Uh, they're my favorites. I think the hashtags are my favorites. So I started hashtag Saturdays because uh, yeah. there's so many and there's so many from way before I even started. Uh, and so I get to watch older videos that I've never seen before, get to be introduced to cards I've never seen before. And then, you know, now I get to uh, participate with them. So yeah. I try to do a new one and a very old one and a new one. So uh, I feel like it can bring, you know, I can live in the past today. Yes. I love them too. I love hashtags and I love watching yours. And often I'll watch one of the hashtags that you do and I'll be like, oh, I want to do that. And I think I can't keep doing that. I can't keep, like, every time Benny does one, I do one. He's going to start to think <laughs> I'm stalking him. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I um, I do the hashtag and then I'm doing once a month. I do my own hashtag, which is like the uh, hashtag five tarot decks saved from yes. or Oracle yes. decks saved from. So that's a series saved from that I'm doing. Um, I have a next, my next one will be next weekend. I haven't decided which one I'm doing, but I keep writing a list of the kind because I'm, I have, you have, I have to really critically think about like, how am I going to make this series interesting for the next one and for the next one and try to really not, I'm trying not to be boring on the ones that I do. So no, I did a terrible one in Oracle. Oh, so well, thanks. Um, let me see. I do have a couple of other questions I want to make sure I don't forget to ask. Sure. Um, oh, that's what I wanted to know. A couple of things. Do, do you have a set schedule on posting videos? Uh, sort of. I do my okay. cards in a cuppa every week. I do Monday through Friday. And I've started to theme my tarot deck that I use for that and do a flip through of that. So I'll do a flip through on the weekend and then use that deck for the next week for my cards on a cuppa. And then, and on each of those, I say to people, if you want to see a flip through, you know, here's the link for it. And it just gets me using more of my decks, which is. Fantastic. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I like that. Flip it's very interesting. Week. Yeah. I think that's great. That's good. Yeah. And what equipment do you use to do your videos? Nothing fancy. I got a couple of key lights and I, well, I just invested in this, um, this camera because or the one that I'm, that I'm using this for this interview, because I don't, you know, as you know, I don't do, um, videos where I show my face, but I thought, right. I think maybe I better start to do that a little bit. Um, okay. Do, what, uh, what camera are you using? Oh, uh, it's a Logitech stream cam, I think is what it's called. Okay. But just for my everyday videos, I just use my phone. And I Okay. Well phones today are amazing, aren't they? Yeah, just a oh, there it is. Samsung S twenty two, I think. Okay. And it, it does a brilliant job. I've got a Yeti microphone, which I usually don't use because the microphone on the phone is is perfect. And okay. That's about it. Thing, Very thing cool. Yeah, yeah I, I went all out. I actually am updating my whole space. So I have this contraption It's that hooks onto the desk and it has several arms. That my, uh, my computer's on it, my camera's on it, my microphone's on it, and my light's on it. It's yeah. just one piece uh, oh. that, I found, yeah, that I found on Amazon. I, did a, I was looking for something like this, looked on YouTube, found it. Very inexpensive. Well, I think it's very reasonably priced for what it is. I need a link. I need a link. Yeah, <laughs> I'll add the link below. Let, let me write that down. Link. Okay, but it was like a hundred and some dollars. But it's just one item. You didn't need anything else. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then, um, but I I ended up I want to update it because it does t it it's tall and so it takes space in one area. Right. So I got some more stuff. I got a better light. So we'll see. We'll see what works, what doesn't work. And then I struggle. Oh, my God. I struggle with my microphone because the coil is really tight. So if I'm not careful, it'll pivot the camera. And it drives me crazy. And I can only have it so far to me. So I bought a wireless microphone. So we'll see how that goes. So, like... 
doing everything. Uh, and because I now know that I'm going to be doing this until for quite some time, years, um, I think it's a good investment for me since I do enjoy it so much. Definitely. Yeah. And are there things that you don't share on, uh, on YouTube that you're like hard line? I don't share this. Um, honestly, not, not really. I, I'm, I'm a very private person, mm -hmm. but I, there's for some reason, I, I feel compelled at times to just be very open and authentic about myself and my experiences. Like for example, with my grief and, and other people will, will come to me after and say, you know, I needed to hear what you said. And, and so I don't, I don't limit myself. Just whatever comes, comes because there's a reason. If something comes okay. up, there's someone who needs to hear it. So. Yeah, I think this is the first time I've ever talked about my cancer experience. In fact, yeah. I wish it was only one time. I, I've had, you know, the diagnosis several times. Um, I really, I mean, I'm very open about it, but it, as many times as I've had it, it seems like really many, I, they really have it that many times. And I'm like, yes, I really did. Um, but uh, I now get to work with that population and it's the best job I've ever had. I haven't disclosed what my job is. I don't know if I ever will. I probably won't. But I, I love my job. Um, I really feel that I'm making a difference in the work that I do. It brings a lot of fulfillment uh, and it's based on my own personal journey with being a cancer patient and now someone who has been able to get to the other side. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and, it, and because you shared, it opened the door. Remember I said when someone shares, you know, it kind of opens the door. That's what happened is, uh, you know, you being so very authentic and, and allowed me that moment as well. So thank you for that. But yeah, there's, um, I have, I only have one thing that right now is a hard line and that's what I do for a living. Yeah. Um, one day I might open that up, but probably not. <laughs> so, um, I'm not comfortable. I'd have to be a hundred percent comfortable before I would do that. Yeah. Um, and do you have a personal practice that you do that's for you only? Yeah, I, I do actually. I've got, um, well, I've just started a, a moon journal. It's a moon 13 moon journal, I believe it's, I think that's what it's called. And it's, it's lovely because it's just, you know, spending that time each day where I'll, you know, pull a tarot card or two and just reflect on, on the card, reflect on the day. And so there's that. There's also, you know, my, my daily goals that I do for myself, the journaling. You know, so there's, there's really quite a lot that I do. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by the whole tarot Sometimes. journey that you go on? Sometimes. That's what I'll put yeah. it aside for a while. In fact, I took a couple of months this summer where I didn't do too much. I, I had um, an illness that was difficult and it took a lot of physical energy from me. Mm -hmm. so I just kind of put everything else aside and I didn't do any videos in that time um, because I just needed to heal and rest. So, yeah. but now that I'm back at it again, it, it feels really good and it, it feels normal to be doing these things I can. So not doing them I, doesn't feel right. Yeah. I, for a while I was putting so much pressure on myself to get the videos out on Saturdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if I miss, I felt like I was letting everybody down. I felt like I wasn't being consistent. And then one day I was like, whoa, Vinny, that is way too much pressure. And if you continue this, it's not going to be fun anymore. I try to do a minimum of two. I prefer to do three a week. Yeah. I will say that when I first started, I'm like, oh my God, like what kind of ideas am I going to come up with to do? Like, 
And like, is there enough content? Well, I'm finding that I don't have enough time to do all the videos <laughs> I want to do. There just isn't enough time. So yeah. that hasn't been the issue. But I give myself a lot more freedom to not post a video if I'm just not in the mood. And I just started um, working out. I work out on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I hire yeah. a personal trainer. I'm up at 5.30 in the morning. I go to the gym, get ready, go to work, and I'm exhausted by the time I come back. So I think what I'm going to be doing is Saturdays. It's going to be a day where I do all my videos, and then I don't have to do anything during the week. Yeah. So, uh, But I, I, I've had the same kind of practice where I pull three cards, and so now I'm starting to change that up i'm going to start doing journaling and i kind of do a journal but what i do is i i do my reading for the day, day and i post it on instagram nice. and that's kind of like been my journal but i want something tactile something that i can do um i don't know how beneficial it's going to be in the long run but i want to try so i went crazy and i bought markers and journals and all these pins of all different colors yeah. no stickers yet no washi tape yet but eventually i think that i have oh washi tape oh my gosh i have so <laughs> much washi tape <laughs> i love washi tape washi tape is actually quite fun but it's figuring out how to make it look nice when you put it down yeah so with the new year coming what kind of tarot goals do you have for yourself i think just working on a bit more consistency um, and yet, you know, I, I, I'm fairly consistent already, but just really keeping that so that it, it is a, a daily part of my life and, and not something that I ever have to remind myself to do. That would be super. Um, okay. to, to continue to, you know, post videos and, and make videos and, and to remember that I'm, I'm the reason why I'm doing it, you know, and, and not get focused on on something that isn't important yeah well good that makes sense all right uh, do you have any questions for me because i that's the questions i got yeah oh gosh there's so many things i would love to ask you Benny. <laughs> oh just to be able to sit down and have a cup of coffee with you would be so much fun. well you know what we should plan it just you know no video no nothing yeah. get on like yeah. zoom or yes and then I would love that. That's one of the things is I would love to be able to do that. Have people to talk to and just do chit chat. So we can plan that for you and I, you know, have a little private tarot chit chat talk or just catch up and see how we're doing. Yeah. Oh, that would be super. I'd love that. I'd love that. Okay. Then what we about your goals? <clears throat> do you have any oh, goals, my goals. next year? Yeah, actually I have um, a list of goals. So I've already accomplished some of them already because I my my yearly is in August. So for this year coming up, I've, some of the goals that I have is actually to get my tarot space look like really one of those nice tarot videos that uh, backgrounds that people have. That's one is to have our, Lisa help me accomplish a goal with getting somebody on my channel that is very renowned and respected in our uh, our group so i want to have another person that i can do that with um don, don i want this year this year i yes don michelle would be great this <laughs> year um my goal my big goal is to no longer need the guidebook to be able to read the cards that's my number one goal um and then Outside of that, I have several other ones, but I want to come up with a couple of more series that are kind of my own that I can yeah. have fun and enjoy. Um, I'm looking at a couple of the things that I, I want to do. And I want to get away from just doing um, hashtags and walkthroughs. I want to be able to kind of show how the practice works for me and how I do things. So, like this month, I De December is a spiritual practice month for me so everything that i do with tarot is related to spirituality and so my gonna i don't know how to do this yet um but i'm i want to show what that practice looks like like it probably in the next couple of weeks video record how my practice goes and how i do it um 
but I don't know. I don't know how to figure that out in my head yet. So we'll see. Oh, I want to have an intro made for my channel. I have the vision of what that would look like. I just got to get somebody to do it for me. Yeah. Um, and I, like, I kind of want to get a kind of a branding of yeah. my, of my channel. So yeah, those are the kinds of things I want to do. Oh, and I want to meet as many people as possible as well. I want to make tarot friends. I really do. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's an incredible community and, and it's so diverse and people are so interesting. And yeah, I, I agree with you. The more people that I can meet, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. This was a wonderful conversation. Love getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, and I look forward to our own personal chit chats. I really, I really am. Oh, that sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor and such a pleasure. And I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you so very much for joining us. I will put the links uh, to Lisa's channel below. I'll put the link to the stand below. And I think I have a couple of other things that I, I said I would end up putting the links below. And, so I'll end up doing that as well. But until next time, my name is Benny, and I'm the Fool's Apprentice. Bye, everybody.